The following clips are from the YouTube channels called Fresh and Fi and Just Pearly Clips. I will put a link to these videos in the description. The problem with many videos, such as the ones related to men's issues, is that YouTube will not place advertisements on these videos, so you cannot make money off these kinds of videos. And this is why that in these video clips, you see requests for donations. Plus, other YouTube channels that have videos devoted just to men's issues have been cancelled by YouTube, and many owners of these YouTube channels suspect that it is because of many women complaining to YouTube. Some of my videos related to men's issues has the same problems. So, I attempt to be careful regarding how things are stated in the video, the titles, and the description. I attempt to take out as many bad words as I can without changing the context of the video. Men can't be honest with women. This is one of the few podcasts where we tell women straight to their face, being a hoe is unacceptable. Your past does matter. We don't wife up these types of chicks. We want you to be a lady, not be a man, is not attractive. It would be ridiculous for me to call you a dumb, weak bitch for wanting a man that's stronger and more capable than you. But we don't question women on that. But if a man says, I don't want a hoe, he's immediately met with, you're insecure, small dick energy. It's giving me toxic vibes. I would argue you're wrong, and I'll tell you why. If I'm insecure... I'm going to do everything in my power to keep that girl because I don't know where I stand with her. The real definition of being insecure. However, if I am secure, I'm going to tell her my boundaries. I'm going to tell her what I want. I'm going to tell her my requirements. And if she chooses not to adhere to those requirements, aka she is a hoe, then I have the ability and the security to walk away. So if anything, it's the complete opposite of insecurity. Okay, question for you. If you found out, let's say you were with a guy and you were dating him for a while, then you found out that he did gay porn. And you, would you stay with that guy? No, you wouldn't. And most women here would not. Why? Because that man's past matters from that degree because he's doing gay things. I agree. So why you. is it that a man's past, right, can affect them in that degree, right? And it's like, yo, I'm going to disqualify this guy. And on top of that, I want him to make money in the future. But if a guy says, I just want a girl that hasn't been ran through, that's a problem. You can I'll get up and leave. It's not that big a deal. You don't go to cause a spectacle. Go ahead. Doors that way. Here's the thing. She's a lower quality woman, obviously involved in the sex industry with two children. She doesn't qualify for the guy that she's trying to get, which is why she fell some type of way from what I was saying. It's the truth. Her past matters and it started to burn her inside. That's the truth. Now, what percent of women that are 31 do you think have less than 15 bodies? I don't even, I'm just totally shocked. When you think 16 is a legal age, you're always thinking like 40, 14. And you're thinking, 15, that's like, that's that's more than one a year. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> so what do you... <laughs> I'm just is that, or you're shy, like, that's a lot or a little? That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In like 14 years, 15. Yeah. Wow. And that's like going, that's what's going on now. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Listen, right, you, you wanna, if you're going to go there and sleep with a girl, make sure you're like number three, number four. You don't want to be number nine, number 10, number 11, number 12, number 15. Because then you're, you're 15. Imagine if you're number 15. Uh, honestly, you know 14 uh, men before honest, you. Honestly, and, I mean, you heard, and you heard the panel, right? The majority <laughs> by 31 have probably slept uh, with more. If a guy's the 15th guy, yeah, he's going in knowing I'm not staying. I'm leaving straight after. So whoever's number 16, whoever's number 17, it is what it is. Yeah. And then it will get to someone who's like number 30 and they're like... I wife it, <laughs> and it's yeah. like that person is the one that lost, I, and everyone else got it for. I, 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 I will say something on the other end though. A lot of guys do cap because they'll come on these shows and they'll say they wouldn't wife a girl over a certain count, mm. Mm. and I know who they're dating. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> so you want a one percent man. OK, you want a man that makes a lot of money, successful, ambitious, can provide you a certain lifestyle. I countered and said, you can want that. But the consequence of dealing with this caliber of man who's rare is you're going to have to share him. OK, you don't like that. You want him to be exclusive to you. So you're hoping that you'll find one that's going to meet these requirements, which, quite frankly, is slim to none. Basically, get this top tier man. You want him to be committed to only you. And you want a certain lifestyle where you can't necessarily be told no. That's a possibility, but it's slim. Attraction, ladies, is not symmetrical. I'm going to say that again. Attraction 
between the two genders is not symmetrical. If I want a woman that's feminine, submissive, and attractive, right, and cute, the woman is within her right to want a male that's masculine, dominant, and a leader. We complement each other. We're very different. The market dictates your value, not you. I'm going to say that again because a lot of girls want to sit here and say, I'm a princess. I'm a 10. <laughs> no, you're not because the market dictates your value, not you. Men had to deal with this reality that the market dictates our value because guess what? If I'm broke, short, ugly, girls don't date me. <laughs> exactly. So the market dictates my value. So as a woman, if a high value man isn't marrying you or proposing to you that you love, admire, and respect, the market is judging you as well. And now you're not of value. The problem is this. We live in a world where we tell women that they can do no wrong. They're perfect however they come and they don't have to self-improve. And I'm here to tell you, that's a fucking lie. You got to self-improve just like us and you got to bring value. Mm -hmm. The thing is, you guys are brainwashed to think your value comes from what we do. No, it doesn't. It comes from the opposite of what we do because women, men need a woman to assist him in his mission, not your mission. Your mission is irrelevant. When he benefits, you benefit. When you benefit only, when you benefit he's immediately going to be pushed to the side. No girl wants to be with a guy that she can run all over. Got so it. a 1% woman does not exist unless she's alongside a 1% man because your value is determined by the caliber of man you can attract. You can't self-proclaim you're a 1% woman. This is the city where I grew up. It is called Park Forest, and it is an all-black American city. I think looking at this is better than looking at some guy talking. Some women always believe that they can hide stuff from a person. We might not know the details, but we know it is bad. Back in the 80s, during the summer before I started college, I dated a girl named Pam. Pam's mother was black, and her father was Japanese, so Pam was beautiful. To make a long story short, Pam did me wrong, and for 30 years, she thought I did not know. Pam also believed she could always get me back whenever she wanted me. Particularly, if she did not get the man she wanted, which was a high-value man. Over these 30 years, I would run into Pam, and she always let me know she was dating other men, but she wanted to date me again. I always ignored it and walked away. When Pam and I were 54 years old, Pam made it very clear that she wanted to get back together. Now she was 54 years old, and because of it, no man wanted her. I wrote Pam a letter telling her that I did not want to get back together, and the details of why. Plus, I told Pam I had checked out back in 1992. Basically, I was telling Pam that I was a nice guy, and just because I was a nice guy never meant I wanted her. So over the years, when Pam thought I still wanted her, I was just being nice. Thus, I always got her hints about dating again. I just did not want her. Pam went off. She became angry and upset. A few days later, I got seven voice messages each about five minutes apart, with Pam screening. I did not listen to any of them. I just deleted them. The bad part about my dating life is that over the years, one of the best girls I dated was an ex-adult film actress. We never had sex, and we never kissed. The ex-adult film actress knew her past mattered, so she was always honest with me. Plus, when it came to having a lot of sexual partners, she had less than many of the women I knew. Plus, the women that did not have a lot of sexual partners had a lot of credit card and personal loan debt. So they needed a man that made a lot of money to keep them in their lifestyle. And the other women were delusional or full of self. They say that women in Brazil, Colombia, Thailand, the Philippines, Vietnam, Eastern Europe, and Africa are some of the best women to marry. I got my passport. July 2023. Thank you for watching. Please click the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and share this video.